بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الماء وأكرمني بنور الفاء اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزاء نعلمك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين خوب الحمد لله we have to feel to continue our discussion and الحمد لله very good points are mentioned by the sisters first I would like to mention some hadith if I can connect inshallah okay inshallah later when I connect I mention some I want to uh, work together on developing inshallah maybe something more structured so I think what is very important is that first of all our children and students children at home and students in the school or madrasa they realize that the world is based on uh, truth on realities because maybe for us this is obvious but maybe for a child it's not obvious that we are not making realities we are not making you know facts maybe for a child especially you know if they watch you know movies or games too much you know some of them you know go out of reality and maybe they think reality is just what you like reality is you know what you desire and even if they cannot you know for example uh, do everything they may think at least with the help of parents they can you know do everything you know they, sometimes they don't realize that there's, there's a limit in what we can do and we are surrounded by lots of things which are not in our control so I think it's very important that uh, gradually we introduce to them the concept of al-haq, truth. And I cannot uh, think of any way to be rational without connection to the truth. Because rationality means that you use your best of availability which is aql that Allah has gifted us in order to find the truth and act according to the truth. Uh, our scholars, uh, you know, used to use, uh, st still they do this terminology, salam alaykum, that we have two types of hikmah, two types of wisdom. al nazariya and al hikmatul amaliyya theoretical wisdom and practical wisdom theoretical wisdom is to find what is or is not there okay you use your intellect or reason in order to decide to find out what is there and what is not there what is fact what is not fact for example uh, in philosophy in theology <coughs> In mathematics, yeah, we use theoretical intellect, but practical, uh, sorry, theoretical wisdom. Pr practical wisdom is to find out what is right, what is wrong. One of the sisters mentioned this issue. So, what is right, what is wrong, or values, or ethics? Uh, these are the things that are related to the practical wisdom. They used to divide it into three parts. 
one was tadbirul manzil management of the house economy of the house or other issues about the management of the house this is practical wisdom you may be uh, top scientist but not necessarily know how to manage your house yeah it's a different skill and it's not a matter of what is there or what is not there. it's a matter of what to be done or what not to be done another th uh, thing is ethics and the third was siyasatul mudum politics one was how to run your house one is how to run the society to the city or state and the middle was akhlaq your ethics so although they say it's a matter of using aql in theoretical or practical things but as you can imagine this is something that is not to be only learned it's something that needs cultivation of aql especially when it comes to practical wisdom yeah maybe for example you can isolate someone from family from community and teach him physics or chemistry maybe he becomes very good scientist but he cannot develop practical wisdom in isolation yeah you cannot give them practical wisdom just by every day taking them to library and you know classroom and uh, giving them food wisdom especially practical wisdom is to be learned in the real life scenarios yeah to be in fa with family with society even you know when our schools go to children and sometimes maybe they fight or you know they have problems that is very important part of the learning yeah if they don't you know fight as a child in future then they will be shocked yeah but they have to get used to you know fighting and you know sometimes you know how, not how to deal with yes mm -hmm. not to have you know good days sometimes they have good days sometimes they have bad day by little but of course it should be supervised mm -hmm. if it becomes systematic like bullying that's different because that that damages the confidence of the child yeah but normal fight you know as long as there is no injury it's fine like for example how much our body needs you know viruses yeah if we don't go outside after some time you know we become always ill because our body gets these viruses and you know prepares itself the same is uh, with our mind what is good is that Allah made children in the way that they fight without developing hatred yep one of the things that we have about children is yahtasamuna bi ghayr haqdin yeah so this fighting is very good and allah has immunized them by not developing hatred but unfortunately we as adults <laughs> it's difficult for us not to develop hatred so if we fight we develop hatred so a child in home in a school and i don't know streets in the neighborhood they learn realities and these are very important for developing hikmah wisdom yeah but if it is a matter of you know all the time playing games and on computer or even on internet for example even if it is not you know game it's not a reality or it's not reality as it is maybe it is very selected reality or you know very yeah so sometimes it can be very good better than reality when you are surrounded you know just by like-minded people and you think there is no one you know who is dangerous you think everyone is good but the reality is not like this mm -hmm. or sometimes you are surrounded by bad people and you think there are no good people there because everyone you know gives you bad comment or attack or whatever mm -hmm. so internet has some reality but it's not easy to interpret based on internet what is the great picture i mean in politics is like this when you look at internet sometimes you think for example 
this candidate is going to win or this party is going to win but and the reality you see it's not like that sometimes people have a good presentation so a child can develop wisdom in real life scenarios family extended family community a school on the streets etc and we cannot isolate child and teach the child this is not helpful and one of the things by the way i also emphasize when we have you know uh, either interfaith or you know with the public you know meetings i always emphasize on the role of families because unfortunately in some societies modern societies now they try to isolate families so as soon as for example uh, uh, i don't want to mention name of a country so i was told for example some religious families the daughter for example you know called police that for example my father asked me you know why you come late for example and then they may take the child from the family yeah so they they think they can better look after children than family and this is a mistake if you interfere too much uh, you are damaging and no government in the world can play the role of the family yeah but um, this is a problem and we have to be careful uh, you know not to let this trend you know to rise so family a school community all have to work together now one of the things that i am thinking and i need also your help and ideas is that when we say to children that there is truth that we have to observe an indicator of that can be you know we can say pleasure of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we can use the concept of light we can use concept of ajr reward we can use heaven when you go by the truth yeah so we can connect all these to the truth so that they don't think religion is arbitrary i think in the early ages we need to emphasize on understanding and asking questions for understanding finding reliable sources and being able to trust i think this is very important part of rationality that you have to be able to, uh, to be able to trust because some people think rationality is a matter of being always critical and you know protesting objecting this is one side of rationality for the people who accept easily but i think for a child when they are very young we it's not healthy to encourage them to question too much question for the sake of understanding not question in the sense of challenging others and objecting and say no i don't believe unless you can you know convince me no i think a child needs to be able to trust yeah because for for example for a child it's very important that parents are happy with the child yeah because they look as one hadith says children look at parents as their lords yeah a child you know two years three years four years you know thinks uh, his god is mother or father or you know both of them are the gods yeah they're lords and this is why you know when you keep uh, you promise you must keep your promise because then it will give them very bad you know experience if their god is not yeah or for example sometimes uh, father or mother you know get uh, get upset and they say I don't like you. I don't want you, you know, I don't like you. for a child 2 years, 3 years, 4 years this is destructive. Yeah? It's very destructive. So, when child is in this condition, then you teach him to question everything or you know as a for example in the nursery or you know first years, you know, say you know, if your parents say something ask for reason. If your brother says something, ask for it. 
So I think this is not healthy. You know, we should not uh, bring things too early. For a small child, what is important is to know that there is reality. It's not whatever he wants, you know, is going to happen. It's not everything is possible, but also to be able to trust. But for example, don't trust if someone on the street, for example, tells you, no, come with me. But trust your family, trust your teacher. You know, for them, teachers are very important. Sometimes, initially, parents are very important, but later, gradually, teachers become more important. If teacher says something is very important, has authority. But uh, later, yes, later friends, peers become more important. But uh, at the beginning, uh, parents are very important. I think one of the problems of people of our age is they are not able to find whom to trust. Yeah, whether it is a role model or, for example, in a theoretical side, you know, for example, what is true Islam? What is, I don't know, true uh, teaching of Islam in this particular case? Yeah. And we need to equip ourselves with the ability to trust. Uh, Sometimes in the past, people were not that critical, but because they trusted, you know, our system of uh, religion, ulama, maraja, hose, community, they had better situation. We see some problems in having, you know, 100% trust, but the solution is not to damage that trust. <laughs> The solution is to keep the trust and little by little make it more sophisticated. Develop it. Yeah. yeah they have to trust already yeah. we have to yeah. maintain yeah. it yeah. and we need to if there is problem for example if you go out and someone says something on the street uh -huh, don't trust yeah. but parents yeah. the school uh, grandparents for example we shouldn't you know say whatever they tell you and you know, ask questions you know why you have to explain yes, yes. So my It's, a, it's difficult to be very specific, but I think this can be maybe up to, for example, you know, seven, eight years. Yeah. Yeah. So, in this uh, age limit, as I said, truth to be told concerns for concern for truth reading if we uh, help them develop habit of reading reading not very difficult things but reading books like a stories history something suitable for that age but because part of the process of rationality is that you need information information comes through books yeah yes it can come through for example the TV or you know it, but they are not reliable or enough adequate sources of information for the whole history of literature our main source of information or for the experts for the scholars is books yeah not uh, you know other things because people in their books bring the best of their knowledge and experiences and information so we need to make them uh, 
develop the habit of reading books. It's very important. And also help them with, you know, their writing. Writing is also very important uh, to write because I think a part of rationality is also to be able to uh, speak and write. Even if it is with, you know, computer, you know, to type, it's okay, but handwriting is better, is much better. And I remember in our school, they were not very much asking us to, about, you know, calligraphy. But for example, some of the teachers, they say, you should only use pencil, not pen. Because with pencil, you can write more, you know, carefully. Uh, so, writing, drawing, drawing is also very good. Because this is a way of expression. Reading, Okay? And learning how to trust. Learning to be truthful. So, this is for the first stage. Then, after that, I think that it's the time for going for explanations. So that we should little by little teach them that they should try to understand what is reason behind uh, you know everything okay especially when it comes to scientific issues don't uh, start this with religion please <laughs> because we shouldn't rush you know when they are learning how to you know use logic and reasoning uh, we don't need to, but if they ask, we explain. But we don't need to say, you know, okay, you have to ask for everything about religion. Let these things for some years, you know, remain in their mind and heart and settle. If they ask questions, welcome. But don't encourage them to ask questions. For example, some people say, what should we say about God? My humble understanding, I might be, you know, mistaken, but my humble understanding is uh, just make them love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and appreciate and don't use Allah as a way for, you know, frightening them and just answer their questions. You don't need to, you know, anticipate, you know, lots of things. Little by little, they, when the questions come, it shows that now it's the time to explain. They ask, where is Allah? Yeah. Because they hear Allah, Allah, Allah. Yes. Where is he? Everywhere. Because they have kids, they like to see and hear. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, you can say, every, because, you know, sometimes uh, some answer for them is enough. For us is not enough. Yeah. But for them is enough. Mm -hmm. So we don't need to explain all the philosophical, theological things about God to them. Yeah? Yeah. If... They ask questions, we explain, but to their level. Prophets, you know, had this habit. We should speak to people according to the level of aql. What about children? Definitely, the same is with children. We should speak to them according to the level of their aql, not our aql. Okay? So, in this second stage i think it's very important that they you know now look for explanation some of you mentioned you know like cause and effect yeah. why rain is coming mm -hmm. yeah why for example there is earthquake i don't know if it happens you know for things like this in science or for example you know even at home for example uh, they should learn that, for example, you know, there is a limit in money. Yeah. For example, now we have money, we can buy something. Another time we don't have money, we cannot, you know, buy, we have to save money. So these are realities of life that they have to learn and we have to explain and we need to involve them. Uh -huh. Yes, yes, yes. I think in this stage, if you can involve them in making some of the planning for family, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, 
Sometimes you say, what is your opinion? You know, uh, not giving them authority, but <laughs> listening to them. You know, what do you think? And I, I think then you can give comments. For example, oh, this is good idea, we can do it, or this is good idea, but we need to do it with some change. Or maybe this is a good idea, but we cannot do it now. Yeah, they have to learn because if whatever they say, we say we do, we'll do it, they will not learn. Or if whatever they say, we say it's not good, they will lose confidence, then they will shy, you know, to say anything. So it's very important. Pardon? So it's, it's very important that we involve them in our, you know, process of decision making gradually so that they can learn, especially about the things that relate to themselves. For example, if you want to buy a cloth for them, okay, seek their opinion, but not whatever they say, you know, you do it, but try to say that, pardon, yes, balance is very important. Because sometimes we listen too much to children and this is not a service. They have to real, uh, realize that the world is not based on what they want. Yeah? So balance is very important. Uh, yes. Uh, what about when they become teenage, when their question is uh, sometimes bigger than, um, or, or not more than our knowledge, but sometimes we can't explain it the way the, the children uh, get used to, especially from the school. Yes. Like, uh, like when they ask about uh, Dean, when they ask about the freedom, when they ask about this big idea, you know, what they're facing now. So, uh, do we answer them the way we understand it, or we um, ask them to go to someone who or can they, like, especially the language, sometimes um, yes, it's a problem. Yeah. When they ask questions, especially about religion, that we don't have answer, or we have answer, but maybe we are not sure, we are not, you know, confident, it's very important either you read a book yourself or, you know, listen to lectures, prepare yourself, or ask someone to help yeah because religion is also in need of expertise it's not that everyone is able to answer all the questions but don't ignore their questions okay either equip yourself with knowledge and answer or say okay we go to for example uh, our sheikh we go to this uh, scholar or this uh, lady a scholar whatever and uh, you can ask your questions and many times uh, also it's very important how the question is handled this is very important if you show any sign of you know anger or any sign of you know you are a bad person I otherwise you don't ask you know these questions etc this is very bad it's very important to welcome and they should know that you, you have no worry about questions. And even you can encourage them sometimes. Yeah. If it's not getting too much, it's very good. You can ask questions. Islam encourages us to ask questions. Yes. Uh, so... Yeah. Do you think that trust they built since they've been kids to that age? Do you think it can be shaken? No. If if you know if it is in the sec in the first stage, no. no. It's it's better. It's better. 
in the first stage, for example, if you don't know, say we will discuss about this and then you yourself study to answer. <laughs> it's not good to say I don't know yeah. in the first stage. Okay, and then that answer has to come back from the mom or from... Mom or father or someone, but uh, you equip yourself and answer the question or, you know, arrange it. But you don't say I don't know because for a child at the first stage, a mother who doesn't know is not a good mother or is not possible. Uh, you know, the child doesn't understand why my mother doesn't know. <laughs> my mother should know everything, you know? Yes. Yes, exactly. And that is good. We shouldn't damage it. That's very good. We should have that and use it for growing them up in the way that we like. Uh -huh. So what what we did at home, we made a book of uh, questions because sometimes I told them I don't have, have the answer now. It's not because I don't know it. This it's need a discussion. Yeah. And it's need more than you need to look at the uh, it's a big picture. We can't focus on one side, we have to look at yeah. the the whole thing. But you know the we have many questions, so <laughs> For first stage, certainly you don't say I don't know. For the second stage, sometimes you may say I don't know, but not too much. But later, third stage, for example, if it's my Jose students, I think it's good if I say sometimes I don't know. Because they have to also learn humbleness. <laughs> and you know, they say Allah Metabatabai many times when he was asked question, he was saying, I don't know. And then he was answering something that was normally very good answer. But first he was saying, I don't know. Maybe, yes. Sister Estra, you want to say? Uh, maybe for boys and girls are different, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, yes. uh, about. No, seven like maybe fourteen, fifteen, like this. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Because they, you know, there is difference between say Al Sistani and uh, sometimes yeah. So I face this uh, this problem. And next time I, I said I I, will, I want to tell you something. There is so many scholars. So your family follow which one? Say the Al Sistani. There is the answer for the say the Al Sistani. This is the answer for the say uh, Fadlallah. At that time, I tried to solve out the, the main problem to understand me. What is the answer for this, uh, the main question? What age they are? Uh, 16 and yeah. Yeah, so maybe uh, this can be by itself a topic to discuss about taqlid. Yes. So that they know that we have to have a marja and every person becomes baligh has to have marja. And then you can say, uh, for example, 
this is the opinion of, for example, Ayatollah Sistani, those who follow Ayatollah Sistani, this is their uh, yeah, responsibility. And there are others, if you want, I can check or you can ask, you know, your parents, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. Also, uh, you know, as parents and even teachers, yeah. uh, it's very good that if someone asks a good question, mm -hmm. we say, oh, this is a very good question. Uh, and also you also show interest if for example you don't know yeah. uh, because then they may think you know my father or mother or teacher it seems they have accepted religion without knowing yeah, oh, yeah. yeah? yeah. so it's very important uh, if uh, you have to say I don't know mm -hmm. sometimes you have to say sometimes you may you know study and answer but if you don't know Say, I myself have very interest, uh, you know, very much interest in knowing this. Thank you, yeah. yeah. Because over time, questions come. So far, I didn't think about this question, for example, you know. Yes. Because uh, I think we need also ourselves always to learn. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah, so, so critical thinking for the second stage is to look for sources, yes. explanation, okay? Uh, not to accept without having reason, mm -hmm. not to reject without reason. And in the third level, this can be expanded. This can go to uh, every aspect of life. In the second stage, maybe we can keep it to sciences or, you know, the things like, the, you know, we don't need to make it for everything because is too much for a person in that age to look uh, for explanation for everything. Yeah? We, we restrict it to the areas which are a little bit farther away from faith or, you know, uh, uh, identity, etc. When they are practiced and trained with that, they know how to argue, how to collect information, etc. Then it can come to the understanding of themselves, religion, etc. And normally, I think at that age also, they automatically, when they are 15, 16, they come to these questions. Before that, they don't come normally to these questions. The second stage has to be connect to the reality more than the abstract. And third stage more. Yes. Okay. Yes. Another thing which I wanted to mention is. Oh, it's Azan time? Yeah. Okay. Just two, three minutes. Uh, maybe we need to have uh, maybe another session online to uh, before it gets too late to discuss this thing. Uh, another thing which is very important, and this can start right from the first stage, is readiness to discuss okay discuss is different from debate so if we can because part of rationality is to talk and to listen yeah if someone doesn't develop the habit of listening and talking and being ready for discussion cannot be rational so it's very good that sometimes we teach them maybe through, I don't know, activities or whatever, to talk and to listen and little by little how to discuss, mm -hmm. how to consult, mm -hmm. especially in the second stage. I think this is very important. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, some of us, we have not learned how to discuss when we don't agree. And therefore, the first time we experience how to discuss is either at work or when we marry. And then we have problems at work. <laughs> Sometimes we cannot make good relation with when someone disagrees with us. It's frustrating. Or with husband or wife, again, creates problems. But if discussion is a habit, and you can discuss, you know, even difficult things without, you know, worrying too much. Mm. Uh, it's very important. And also for us 
as Shia who living here, mm -hmm. I think it's very good that our youths are able to discuss because when they go to university, you know, etc., people will ask them questions, you know, about our faith, you know, non-Shia Muslims, non-Muslims, yeah. So our we have to train our youths here, especially to be able to be voice men and women, and this needs talking and listening. I don't think any good speaker uh, can, uh, you know, say I don't need to listen. Every person, if he wants to speak well, has to listen well. Yeah, discussion is very important part of rationality. If someone says, you know, I have an idea, but I don't want to discuss, I think this is a problem. Because even our masumin, our imams, prophets, they were happy to discuss. Although their knowledge was from Allah, they were happy to discuss. How can then I say, I don't want to discuss? I am inspired, you know, and I just tell you, if you want to accept, accept. Otherwise, don't accept. No, this is not good. Even if you are inspired, you should be happy to discuss. Because don't expect people to accept without this. Yeah. You know, we have even Imam saying that, uh, for example, Imam Sal says, whatever I tell you, ask me for reference from Quran. They were training Shia to be able to back up everything. With... Why we should do mass of part of the head? Yes. Imam said, لِمَّكَانِ الْبَعْ Because Allah says, وَمْسَحُوا بِرْعُوسِكُمْ So even Imam taught them that because there is Ba here, Ba is El Saq. Yeah, means even this mass is part, uh, touching part of the head is enough. Okay, inshallah we will continue hopefully. We arrange another time to finish this discussion. Inshallah. Alhamdulillah. Rabbil